Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making three 1830s lace colorings. Alright, let's start with step number one, which is cutting. So this one is going to be, um, well they're all going to be lace trimmed colorings. So um, I have bought some lace edgings. So this one's going to be edged with a Swiss edging that is looks like this. I was looking at some originals, found some similar motifs with the wreaths, so I decided to go for it. Um, of course, this is machine done, which wouldn't necessarily have been done in the period, but, but I can guarantee you this looks a lot more like the originals than anything I could do by hand. So we're going to go with it. Um, honestly, I've looked at machine work in the period and looked at hand work in the period, and unless you really look at the back and see like how it, the like knots and that sort of thing, you really can't tell all that well, even from a little bit away. So I think it's going to be acceptable. And then I also have some little wreath type um, insertion. There's that. This one we're going to use a pattern from the Workman's Guide. We've used it on the last Pellerine video, which I will link above. And um, this one is figure 11. We're going to do a couple of changes. First of all, I'm going to make this neckline a little smaller because the neckline turned out a little bit large in the last one, so we're going to change that. And the other thing I want, I don't want this to be quite as exaggerated, so I'm going to kind of soften this curve a little bit for this particular one. But other than that, we're going to do it pretty faithfully. I may not come to a, a complete point on these edges here. I might just um, kind of round those out slightly. <laughs> I'm going to put all that together because that all goes together. So I think this edging is pretty close to the fabric in terms of sheerness. I don't know how to hear that. Chicken's going crazy outside. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty close. I think that's a similar weave at least. So that'll be good. Alright, we're going to put that to the side. I'm going to do the lace one next. So here's the lace I purchased. And an uh, insertion as well, wherever that went to. There it is. So that's what I chose for this. I think we're, I don't know if we're going to do organdy or if we want to do wall again. Let's do wall. And this is figure 35 on the work on this guide. And I just enlarged it via the computer, printed it out. Yes, it makes it really blurry, but all you want is these big lines anyway, so. You could technically clean it up if you want to. I've done that before too, but. When it's just me and I'm not putting the pattern actually out there, I don't worry about cleaning things up. If you're working with four one sky patterns, just know for the pellerines, anytime you see a D, it just means double. So that's where you put it on the fold. You don't want to cut that end. All right. So many coloring patterns now. So many of them. Okay. And this is the stuff for lace. So we're going to put the lace in here. That way all my stuff stays together. Alright, now I'm going to find my organdy. And let me show you the trim I found for this. Nice organdy trim. It does have this little surged edge we're going to have to cut off because that's not correct. But other than that, um, it's nice wide edging. And I look forward to working with it. It's like weighs nothing. Like organ D is just so light. Alright, I think we're going to use a sim pack. Oops, sorry, that was me kicking the camera. Usually it's the dog, but today it's me. Uh, we're going to use the same coloring pattern we used for the um, floral cotton dress. And I'll link that above if you haven't seen that video. But it's the same one. We're going to make a few modifications, mostly just cutting about an inch and a half off, pretty much all the way around to make it a little shorter. So there's the organdy one. This is scrap. I don't need this anymore. And here's all the pretty lace. So that is that. Um, let's see. What do we want to start with? Let's go ahead and cut off the the edge here. That's not right. I'm also going to need to run a gathering thread with this one along the top. 
So I might go ahead and do that. I'm going to slowly um, increase. So there's my 12 inch mark right here. So right here I want it to be. Um, even with the uh, rest of the coloring, or the rest of the edging. Okay, something more like that. And it needs to be the whole thing, okay? So now we're going to graduate it back down, which is 10 inches times 2, which is 20, but we're going to give it 25 because we need it to fan out on that little edge there. So 25 inches here needs to be cut down that to this very small point. I'm just going to go over and make sure I have everything else. And then I said 25 for the shoulder again. And I still have plenty for that. Um, and just a little bit left over. Alright, so this section here, I'm going to pin it together because we're going to want to make this small. And I'm going to here. All right, so we're going to start at the very back here. I'm just going to mark this and then let's start gathering. We have a fair bit of gathers to let it kind of go around that curve pretty well. Sometimes organdy doesn't really like to cooperate because it's very stiff. It's fine and pretty, but it's stiff. I'm sorry the background noise is a little much today. You know, we had an ice storm a couple days ago and now Texas thinks it's summer. So um, I'm enjoying the weather and have all the windows open. And we're going to lightly kind of gather it up here for a little bit. Basically, I'm going to lightly gather until we hit where this is the fullest. Alright. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, that's about right the way it is. So, I just gotta, diff I just gotta move these apart where they look fairly even. But I'll just sew this properly with a running stitch right where that um, seam is where we gathered. And that will be almost all of this coloring, really. I'll have to, um, of course, hem the neckline. But really, these should be quicker than the last ones. Because the last ones I had like hem them and um, do all sorts of things to it. So. This one, I may even be able to leave the edges raw because I've been playing with it. It has not been raveling at all. So, if I maybe just do a little top stitch to kind of keep things in place so they don't flop around. I'm going to start sewing the sides so you can see what I would do. I think a running stitch will suffice. that the gathers are evenly distributed. We'll finish off this edge in just a moment. But we're going to sew all the lace on first and then finish edges. Alright, and so that will look like that. So it's just barely gathered, which I think was good. So that was really simple to do. Um, last little step is we're going to um, hem all these raw edges here just with a little running stitch. Really, it turned out super cute. I can't wait to try it on with a dress. I may also go around this, just kind of top stitch it, keep the seam down, but it really does not seem like it's going to have an issue raveling, and you can't tell that it's a raw edge from the front. So I'm going to leave it raw.
let's start working on the next pelerine. So this one's going to be the lace one. And I'm going to start by hemming all the edges just to make sure, um, just so I'm not putting the lace to a raw edge. It might just be easier to go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to fold this in on itself. I have it um, ironed over half an inch or a quarter inch. So half of that's an eighth. And so I'll have an eighth inch hem. And then I can just attach the lace to a finished edge. I have um, scraps of lace, which um, I was told when um, I ordered it. They said I didn't have one length, but they had several lengths, and I said that I'd piece it, it was fine. So, I'm going to find a right and a wrong side to this lace, because lace usually has a right and a wrong side. Alright, so the original is shaped differently, so they were able to have lace along the uh, neckline as well. I don't think we're going to do that. Um, we're just taking the idea of a lace pelerine and um, doing another design. And I may have to ease this in certain places, especially around the curves, to make it lay right. So, I'll have to watch for that. But mostly I want it to set, you know, plainly. But after this, we're going to do the same thing, basically, with the edging lace. And this pillaring will be done. These are easy pillarings to do, these lace ones. They're just expensive. Very last step of this pillaring, we are putting on the lace edging. So this is what it's looking like. I did manage to kind of graduate it so it, you know, stayed pretty flat. I think it looks really nice. I'm going to keep working on this, and then we get to work on the last one. And I have plenty of lace left. I don't know if they just... Um me too much or if I really ordered that much. But um, eventually we're going to make some like chemisettes and collars, cuffs for the 1830s and I think this will be very good lace. I had plenty of the insertion too. Two thirds of the way done. So only one more left. Let's go ahead and look at what we need to do. I don't think I'm going to start it tonight though. Alright. Alright, so I think first step is going to be putting, putting this insertion on the pillaring. So, I think how I want this. I don't want it on this edge. So just like how I did the other one basically. Okay, so we're gonna pin this on and I'll stitch it. Let's see, there's a right and a wrong side to this, right? Sure, I'll call this the right side. And we'll sew it on. I'll probably, yeah, just match that um, edge with the other edge and sew it right up against that embroidery line. So right there's a line there, I'm just going to sew right up against it. And I'll probably also have to gather the lace bit, or the edging bit, I suppose. So yeah, so that'll see the little edging right there. That actually looks really good with that fabric, it does match it very well. And I might be able to do this as a run and fell seam, because it's just set very plainly. There are no gathers. So it does look like it's going to be raveling a little bit. But we shall see. So I'm going to continue this and um, run a gathering thread on the edging. I'm probably going to have to cut the edging in half, simply because there are going to be two ruffles. And so go ahead and do that, run a gathering thread, and then we can finish up this pelerine. So 
I'm going to go ahead and iron that down and then we'll iron these edges in. I'm not going to iron this edge in at all because we're going to put edging across it or put insertion and then the edging on it as well. Um, so because that's going to be flipped over, the way it needs to be um, finished off is going to be different than this. So I want to do this part first before I put that on, if that made any, if that made any sense whatsoever. So I'll do some ironing, we'll come back and hem it, and then we'll put a collar on. Alright, let's go ahead and hem this up. Same way we've been doing the others. I think I, except I made this one slightly thicker of a hem. So, yeah. I think it's our last pillaring, isn't it? We've already made two. Okay. It won't be our last for like forever because I got like three more planned, but be our last for the video. So we already did three ruffled pelerines, and so that was a video. And these are three, I call them lace pelerines because, you know, they're edged. They're, they have edging to them. I think next time we're going to do three embroidered pelerines with hand embroidery. It might be a while before we get to that one because that's going to take a while and I already have, you know, other hand embroidery projects I'm working on. So I need to get those out of the way before committing to something else. <laughs> last step for the last pillaring, sewing on the collar, which I'm doing the exact same way as I did the edging. Put on the insertion, ran a gathering thread on the edging, and now I'm just stitching it to the insertion. Once we get this done, I'm pressing all the seams down, and we'll go ahead and put on a dress and try them all on. All right, ready to try on the pelerines. So I'm in the silk dress, um, mostly because the sleeve supports were already in this dress, and it takes forever to get them out and into a new dress. So again, back is still not done up correctly because I don't have anyone here to help me with it. So yeah, if it's kind of funny, but we're going to do the best we can because I can't be bothered to spend 10 minutes undoing sleeve supports. I've now decided that every dress that I make for the 1830s is going to have its own sleeve supports, and they're just going to go in there and stay in there. They're going to be tacked in, and I'm not going to mess with them anymore. So, regardless, let's try on the pelerines. Here's the lace one first. Can't reach it, there it is. Okay. So this style I'm 95% sure gets stuffed inside the belt. Okay. All right. Really, it's going to stay right there just fine. It's not going to really need anything. This needs to pull itself back over so that it's fully over the sleeves. There we are! Pelery number one! Uh, yeah, I think it's cute. I mean, it definitely looks like 1930s pelery. It fits over the sleeves, so it's definitely wide enough to accommodate that giant poofiness. Uh, here's the back with the not completely done up dress. But yeah, that's essentially coloring number one. I really do like the longer styles. It goes down to like right here, by the way. Uh, which is, you know, not as long as my hands can go down. So it's a shorter than one of the coloring we made last time. But I do like this style where it kind of comes in. It's like the lapettes or lapels, whatever these are called. Um, I do like this style. So, yay! First coloring. <laughs> Probably should have put it on a cap, shouldn't if I? Um, yeah. I probably should have put on a cap too, but okay, whatever. We're talking about pelerines, not anything else. So, yeah, pelerine number one. I think this looks really good with um, this gown. I like the lace. Lace is really pretty. It does want to keep pulling itself off my sleeve, so it's not staying over the sleeves very well. But it seems to be like easy to correct, so that's a good thing. But yeah, pelerine number one. Second pelerine, I thought we'd try on the um, Ormandy one. I'm gonna find the top of this. Yikes. <laughs> Stuck in my hair. Uh, okay, there we go. 
This one I might need a pin shut. The other one kind of stayed on its own. I don't have any good pins with me. So we're going to have to deal with, like, yellow pin. I'm going to try to hide it, though. But we'll try. Okay. And this can also get kind of tucked in. There we go. Well, I haven't tucked it in yet. It needs to be. It doesn't have to be, though. There's one side. I have a hard time finding it. So much roof and frills, it's hard to find things. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Also, does not have to be tucked in, I don't think. So, there. Trying to make this look right. There we go. Yeah. I mean, it definitely fits over the sleeves well. So this one, it works out better because the um, actual coloring part stops right where the sleeves poof. And then we have the ruffle that we ruffled excessively right at the sleeves, at the shoulders. And so it actually does work quite a bit better than the other style over these sleeves. So yeah, 1830s coloring. Here's another one. I don't know what it looks like back there, but okay, pulling it down. Okay, so it goes down to my waist. Let me pull on it. So it is a longer style. I could probably tuck that into the back belt as well, but that's going to be too difficult today. So this is what it's going to be like. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think it's adorable. Um, this is probably my favorite style of the three. Um, I do like the way it fits. I like the shaping of it where it kind of comes up in at this V. Uh, and I do like where it stops below the sleeves and then um, the ruffle comes out. So it makes it much larger. So. There we go. Yay! That's a lot of fun. So, second coloring. Third coloring. So here we are um, with the last one. I actually quite like this one. I like the collar on it. I'm glad we did one with the collar finally. So you see both in originals. You see collared versions and then versions without collars. And I'm very happy that we chose one with the collar because I think it looks cute. Um, I like the little extra rough at the um, neckline. So. Yeah, I just pinned it on as well. I, you could use a brooch too, and honestly, probably not a pin that has you know a plastic head. But it was, we're dealing with what I have right in the sewing room right now, so it's not how I would technically wear it if I was out somewhere. But um, here's the back. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Three little pelerines, um, the lace pelerines. So we did three ruffle pelerines. We did three lace pelerines now. So we're gonna do three embroidered pelerines next which should be quite fun. It might take a while, <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to it. And then we'll have nine pelerines, which I do believe is a um, substantial amount. And so I think we shall stop there at least for the time being, um, although we might not get to the border once for several months. But this is fun. Uh, very glad we got to do it. Very um, happy with how they turned out. I hope you enjoyed the journey, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.